Our show is based out of an Amazon warehouse. Luke is new and fresh out of college with little work experience. And due to his lack of experience, he's having some difficulty gaining the respect and confidence from his employees, even though he's a caring and compassionate manager. Throughout the episodes, you'll see Luke's attempt to help improve the workforce environment and the challenges he faces along a new career at Amazon. The main character of our story is Luke Nelson. He's a recent college graduate who was hired out of college uh, to be the manager of the Amazon warehouse and be in charge of a few employees who work there. Bill Gunther is the regional manager or the boss of the warehouse and everything is run through him. He has worked his way up from the very beginning and has worked hard to get to where he is today. A few of Luke's employees who he looks after are Chauncey Anderson, who is a hard worker, father, but a little complacent and doesn't like to be told what he d is doing. Linda Martinez, who is a loving mother, who is always there, compassionate, ready to help others, very observant as well. Richard Hines is a terrific worker, very wise, been in the workforce for many of years. Uh, you know, he likes to get the job done and not complain about it too much. But one thing that he does like to do is bring in his egg salad for everybody to enjoy because there's nothing like it. Sarah Taggart is the same age, has the same degree, and the same personality as Luke. But one thing that she doesn't have is the great personal skills like Luke to be able to interview well and get the job that she wished for. She has her degree, but, you know, just isn't able to catch a break quite yet. So she's starting from the bottom to work in her way to the top. In the first episode of our TV series, Luke is just getting his feet wet in the warehouse. He's learning the new rules, what he has to do, what he's expected of, and, uh, you know, trying to learn the best way for him to uh, reach out to his employees for them to understand kind of where he's coming from. Uh, episode two uh, is more of a strategic planning and camaraderie where he's, uh, you know, looking to find a way to get his employees to trust him, you know, not having the experience, so not really doing the best job, and, uh, you know, starts, the, that planning that he had in the beginning starts to fall through just a little bit. In episode two, Luke begins to notice something about his newly acquired team. They aren't communicating whatsoever. They're not talking to anyone, whether it be about work or about anything along the lines of just socializing or being there to work together as a team. Luke wants to implement into his team a good communication skills. As seen in Chapter 11, communication is vital to an efficient and successful team or group of employees. Luke begins to think of ways for his workers to be close, become closer as co-workers and as friends. Because like what we talked about in Chapter 10, Luke does not want this lack of communication uh, to be a habit and also become the norm of his employees. A norm, as indicated in our earlier discussion of informal groups and the stages of group development, is a standard shared by the group that guides the behavior of its individual members. If the group begins to become negative, that's only going to make their job much that much harder and going to affect the way that they work as a whole and the company uh, being able to get their production and uh, hit their levels and quotas. In episode three, Luke understands or starts to realize how diverse his workforce is. Instead of thinking it's his buds back from college who, you know, would go with the flow with whatever, he's dealing with people who have been in the workforce for many of years who aren't willing to take anything from somebody who has no experience and who just got a job because they have a degree, especially since they're from different social classes. Uh, in episode four, you know, this starts hurting Luke when he starts seeing these challenges and objections, and this is when he starts to take the time to overcome those, take a seat back, a sit back, and kind of observe and see what he can do to make the most. In episode four, Luke and Chauncey get into a small dispute regarding the chemistry building idea that Luke brought up from episode three. Chauncey has to understand that all Luke is trying to do is have a strategic alliance between all the workers in the company so they're cohesive, work together, and get along. With being a manager comes a lot of responsibility in knowing yourself, 
being able to prepare yourself and your employees, providing support and guiding any type of behavior is important to keeping everybody happy and maintaining a successful company. Luke has to understand that there are four stages of becoming a team. The first stage is formation. The second is early development. The third is becoming a group. And fourth and last is performing as a team. You can't try to perform as a team without having the group come together. A team is made up of multiple individuals, not just one person being able to work the best way as they see fit. One person has to adapt to the others and hopefully come as a cohesive group and work together and fulfill their and achieve their goals. Continuing our episodes, uh, in episode five, the communication, uh, Luke decides he needs to gain control back of his subordinates. Instead of getting upset, he starts and yelling at them. He's focusing on creating a more enjoyable work environment and relationship. Episode six, Luke uses his new strategy to excite his workers and bring a common ground between the two groups. In episode seven, Luke shows that he can adapt to his employees, and by doing so, This is when you start seeing the employees start to respect him more and more. Once you start to see that respect in Episode 8, the workers become motivated by Luke's strong leadership skills and and adaptability, and they begin to follow suit. Episode 9, Luke and his uh, workers are finally able to see eye to eye and allows both parties to increase efficiency and effectiveness in the workplace And now Luke is exceeding his goals, making his boss, Bill, that much happier because, one, he's grown as a person, and, two, he's grown as employees as well. As a group, the general conclusions on management we've taken away is a lot of people don't understand the real definition of management. But management is the process using sets of resources in a directed manner to accomplish tasks in an organization. Management has always been and will be the main way of maintaining a business successfully. Management is the administration of an organization or a government body. With managing, there are always many changes that managers have to deal with. No matter where and when, managers will always face the need for change and the opportunity to create change. Management has gone through a lot of changes, especially because of technology and globalization. As we know, technology is constantly changing, and with that, management changes too. The key challenges for the strategic management of technologies depends on the company's size and its core business. Small firms must focus more on defining and defending their product niche, and large firms on building and exploding their products for information systems. Management around the world can be extremely successful, but as time goes by, it is becoming more and more important The key of management is leading multicultural teams to recognize that there are different strategies in which products can be served. It has been a blessing to work with my group, and we all have our reflections here that I'd like to take one or two key points out of each. But beforehand, it was just a great opportunity to work with these individuals who really understood what it took, what it takes to be a successful management group. We all listed our responsibilities, we all got them done, and we all made sure to communicate on top of that. Laura thought, you know, maybe it would be better to meet in person as well because that's a great way to kind of meet somebody and get their full personality. That way you can know who you're dealing with for the entire Stephanie doesn't see... um, Anything that really needs to be changed by the way that we worked, uh, you know, we all communicated well with one another and have modified our times to complete our conference calls every week. We'd always work with each other. Um, The reflection for James, now from the very start, I've always thought our group has worked together and communicated like a leading organization in an industry. We have excelled as a group, achieving our goals thus far. Uh, There have never been an instance where we weren't sure if the core four we're going to participate or have the work completed. We are excelling and don't plan on stopping anytime soon, even after this class is over. Stephen's reflection is no different from the rest. To this point, he believes our team has done an amazing job communicating and achieving our goals that we've set out for each other. What's been the most effective to him has been our communication, honesty, as well as our flexibility to be able to work together with one another's schedules 
even when we don't even know any of us. We all came together as one group and got things done. Some recommendations we have for future students is it's always important to set the group rules early on because that is how you feel more comfortable with one another and we know what to expect from each individual. From the beginning, our main focus was to be honest and truthful and communicate. As long as we knew if somebody was falling behind, if they communicated that to us, we were going to be there to pick them up and vice versa because uh, you never know what's going to happen throughout the course of a semester. You can be doing well one week and then the next week, you have no idea what's going on. So the fact that we all were able to communicate and as students work together, even with our busy schedules, uh, you know, just the main thing you need to do is focus on setting ground rules with your group and making sure you stick to them as managers as well. You know, uh, also becoming comfortable with your group and establish a generic time and place you can meet right off the bat helps because that way there's no guessing game. And no matter what happens during the semester, as long as everyone is truthful with one another and asks for help, everything will run smoothly. It was a pleasure working with these guys here on Group 7, Team Skywalker. Now, we, we missed uh, Michael Becker from the beginning, but we really didn't skip a beat without him. Uh, we've never even thought about having to do another workload. We've just we've split up the group task and we've gotten them all done with flying colors. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with everybody, and I hope everybody um, learns from this course. And we do great things as individuals as we become managers of our own. Thank you, and have a great day.